A 13 years old kid walks into a drugstore and he asks for chloroform. A lady explains to him that it is illegal to sell this poison. So he turns around and goes to the hardware store next door and he buys some chemicals there. In the evening, he goes to the gas station and buys a liter of petroleum. That summer, hundreds of lives will be taken by the chemicals he bought that day. But the boy will passionately tell every story about every butterfly in his collection, how he caught them. I was a very religious kid, and my parents could bet that I would become a priest. But back in the seventh grade, when I was selling honey in every Saturday morning, I met a priest who was a real sweet tooth. So I soon started delivering his weekly dose of sugar directly to the church house. And one day, he pointed at the table. There was literally the same jar I had brought earlier that, that month which, with honey, but some strange sound was coming from that. I approached, and I saw 12 little crickets chirping in it. I was so excited that I even forgot to leave the honey I had brought. The very same priest gave me a book about butterflies, and I think I have never opened the Bible since then. <laughs> and that new hobby of collecting butterflies literally saved me during long summers when I was deported to my grandparents because there were no kids around, you know, in 15 kilometers, and TV signal was weak, and surprise, surprise, there were no internet. <laughs> but summer soon became too short to try new things, mixing strange liquids I found in the garage, you know, identifying mushrooms, or trying to catch the purple emperor butterfly that I never succeeded. You know, and all the family was involved, you know, walking and stopping suddenly, and dad pointing, do, do you have that one? No, dad, that's a bird. <laughs> Today, I experiment on the daily basis in my biotechnology lab. That is my job. But my passion is still the same, to experiment with everything I found around. Um, almost half of my life I've been involved in science Olympiads. In the, back in high school I was a participant, and now I'm happy to be a part of organizing team. And you may guess who is usually responsible for the practical tasks. Sometimes you have a really brilliant idea, but uh, you know, budget still is an issue, so you need to think of the experiment which is, which is really cheap or for free, uh, but still it lights up the fire of excitement in students' eyes. And I remember one year when we managed to buy a very expensive brand new spectrophotometer. That is literally just a huge expensive box that measures the color intensity in the liquids, and therefore, therefore we can determine the concentration of the substance in the solution. That piece of equipment finally enabled me to prepare very sophisticated practical task in, bio, in biochemistry for the National Biology Olympiad. You should have seen how proud and excited I was telling my colleagues about that idea, and you should have seen how devastated I was. Then it turned out that my colleague brought the wrong bottle from the lab. There were no possibilities, uh, no time left for that particular experiment to happen that year. All I had left was my passion. So I ran to the shop next door and bought stuff. In the morning, the brightest students in my country evaluated the dilution of the bottled pomegranate juice using a beetroot juice as a pigment standard. And kids and their teachers thanked me for really great analytical experiments, and I was lucky and happy that I used that very expensive piece of uh, equipment. And surely I was even uh, happy that, uh, that kids didn't realize that it was done overnight. Anyway, we should be happy that there are more and more science experiments every, in our kids' lives every day. You can spend all the week watching them on YouTube or in science uh, museums, but in the real world, do you and your kids touch 
and feel the environment. Society where I live emphasizes the importance of science and technology education. Millions of euros are being spent annually to create novel tools and means of showing uh, science attractive as never before. You know, perfect pictures, apps for mobile devices, or special plans that allow teachers literally swipe the test tube across the smart board or use a virtual microscope to inspect the virtual drop of the milk. Alternative means of showing the principle of science is, are very tempting. You know, first of all, you don't need to wash all the tubes after the experiment. All you need, just switch off the computer. But you can't switch off your life and the environment like computer. So why do we try our students believe that they can or will be able in the future? You know, pressing buttons on the screen uh, enable kids to simulate colorful reactions or to see how a digital caterpillar, caterpillar becomes a butterfly ju in just in 15 seconds. And I still remember my first butterfly who broke from the pupa in the jar, waking up every two hours and checking for the, for the progress and yet missing the moment when I was at school. Undoubtedly, simulations and pictures are uh, attractive, cheap, informative, and surely safe. But I think it is also fake. These are like photoshopped cover pictures. Everybody in, th in them are perfect not because they are in real, but because, you know, they are done so. I have never caught a perfect butterfly in my life, and just because maybe there is no such. Two weeks ago, I had an experiment with kids that they had to evaluate the volume of the water that could be absorbed by the filling in the diaper, and what the natural moss could be used for the very same purpose. The same day, my sister brought her two daughters to visit me, and they noticed a huge pile of nappies in my kitchen. Soon my kitchen became a lab. And girls experimented with all kinds of liquids and, and diapers, even including the ones th that my baby niece uses at the moment. And I think that was the first evening I've noticed my six-year-old niece forgetting to feed her virtual pet on her tab. Her dream is to become a doctor, and I, I hope she will become a surgeon, but not that one who would be trained only on iPad. We all want our kids to be smart and creative in, our, in every day. So do your job, do your best. Switch off your iPhones, iPads, just for a minute. Go outside, bring your kid, and poke or like something real. Or even better, next time you walk and you see a caterpillar on the pavement, take it and bring it to your kid. Who knows, maybe that is the perfect butterfly. But anyway, it will teach your kid much more about the real life than he could ever grasp with the fingertips on his touchscreen. Thank you.